So I've moved all my Plan 9 systems onto one big grid. I made a private network inside my house for most of them. And this also gives me the ability to play with some network configurations where I can treat the house network outside my Plan 9 grid like the outside world. Uh, there's this uh, old little write-up on the levels of Plan 9 grid, and I am now here. I have a file server that most systems boot off of. I have a standalone auth server. It runs on local storage, so no messing with the file server will affect the authorization system. As I demonstrated in my last video, the file server also provides DHCP and an FTP server for pixie booting. And I have a gateway machine, and it provides an outside-facing network connection on net.alt uh, that systems inside can mount into their namespace to get a connection to the internet. There isn't much to say about setting up the file server that I haven't covered before. It's like setting up a combined file and auth server, minus the auth stuff. Uh, you still need to set users for the file system itself. All the creating and setting user passwords is done on the auth server, so I have to specifically log into the auth server as the auth server's host owner to do any of that. The video pi here is just set up as a terminal and boots off the file server and gets permissions to do so from the auth server. Uh, the main attraction here is going to be the gateway machine, which I named gate. And the description of it will quickly get deep into esoteric binding and namespace theory. So make sure you do whatever readings you need to get into the proper mindset. Since the gate machine boots off the file server, it also uses it to store its configuration files. After it runs through the standard CPU server configuration script, it runs this additional one. I add a directory in RC bin for the scripts used by gate. So the first one it calls does the setup for Ether1. And Ether1 is going to be hooked to the trunk end of a bridge. So I fork off a new namespace, bind Ether1 and the bridge, run a configuration on that, and then bundle it all up and post it in serve. Ether2 is going to act like the traditional net.alt folder. Um, it's given an outside IP address and the address for the outside gateway and the connection service and DNS is set up for the outside network. The Plan 9 systems inside can import this directory and bind it over the local slash net directory to directly use the Ether1 connection here to the outside world. And at the end here, the whole configuration gets posted to serve so it could be mounted in other namespaces. Uh, in the config directory is also an additional namespace recipe. And it gets ran with the standard namespace script so that the default namespace when logged into gate always has the outside uh, net.alt and the bridge device mounted. Next is Ether3. And Ether3 is also an outside facing network port, but is going to be used for connections dialing into the grid. I have a script to run listen on Ether3. Uh, the script will put Ether3 into net alt and tells listen to listen for connections coming in on Ether3. Um, it also runs the standard services. Uh, so you can CPU in and get uh, file system access. And it also runs a fake authorization service. It's also been told to every time it runs um, anything that gets spawned from the listen service gets run in this custom namespace. And the reason for that is that anything in this namespace will have uh, Ether3 bound to net.alt instead of the usual uh, Ether1. And uh, also the gate machine doesn't run an authentication server. 
So in service.gate, RC bin so I have a little script set to listen to the standard authorization port but instead of running the authorization service it uses trampoline which is uh, sort of like port forwarding and anything that comes in on that outside port gets sent to the authorization system inside the grid and then reported back from there. Uh, Ether 5 isn't finished yet, so we'll move on to Ether 6. So Ether 6 is an aliased port. It's a virtual network device and it is hooked to the bridge that is connected to the grid facing ethernet port on ether one and i have a raspberry pi with a sense hat sitting outside my grid network and it can boot the file system and get authorization through gate then import and mount ether six from gate and this means from inside the network i can just dial the internal ip address and access the pi that is technically outside the network uh, and for the time being, I do have like some scripts for the SenseHat Pi sitting in here. Uh, I'm still working on it. And uh, well, now well, I guess I'll give a demonstration of how all this works. So first I'm going to start the login process for the outside Raspberry Pi's inside address. It has a weird lag to it right now that I haven't quite pinned down. So I'm going to start it up and let it chew on it for a while. Get back to it once it finishes. Uh, next, I'll try to ping my router to the internet. And it can't find it at all. So I will import or since I'm using 9front, it's rim port. The from gate, it's net.alt over my net. And I'll try pinging it again. And now it can. But remember, namespaces are per process. So that only applies in that window. Oh, the login for the hat finished. Now, when this Pi starts up, it does so in the outside network so that its regular network address um, is one of the outside ones. So that means from here, I'm already the default network's already on the outside network. But if I say wanted to ping the file server inside the grid, it can't see it. But if I do it sort of in reverse, if I bind all over net, I'm now using that virtual network device inside of gate to ping the file server inside the grid. 
So if I log in with this Pi from the outside and then want to communicate with the inside grid, I can do that. Now, so far I'm not very happy with uh, some of the performance of the file on auth systems. I'm running auth off a of Raspberry Pi, which is a piece of equipment with known flaws. Uh, but when I check the logs on it, it seemed to be responding pretty quickly to authorization requests. So I might try doing things the other way around where I have the file and auth server mount gates outside facing ports and listen directly that way. Eh, but we'll see. This is something I was just able to set up this weekend one piece at a time and I have a lot of finishing touches to work on, but until then, have fun.